If you've played Assetto Corsa Competizione, then chances are you'll have had to make a pit stop. And when you've made that pit stop, you'll have wondered why the driver that was 4 seconds behind you coming into the stop is now 4 seconds ahead of you. This highlights why pit stops in ACC are so important, and in processional races such as the Hungaro Ring, it can be your only chance to overtake. In the following guide, we hope to show you the basics of how to make a quick and safe pit stop on ACC, offering you some hints along the way to get you off pit road as quickly as possible. And how not to hurt your lollipop holding mechanic. These lot truly are the bravest people in motorsport. And they don't like it when you overshoot the box. The GT3 racing in ACC simulates real-life GT endurance and sprint events that feature in the GT World Challenge Europe series. In both types of events, pit stops are required while one driver gets out, the second one gets in, and tyres are changed, cars refueled, etc etc. In the game, this process takes a default 30 seconds. Your aim is to keep it at 30 seconds, avoiding any unnecessary delays. Things that will lengthen a pit stop beyond 30 seconds include damage repairs and brake pad changes, but the most common time-wasting mistake is overshooting the pit box or simply stopping short, resulting in an agonisingly slow virtual push by your mechanics into the correct position. Now there are measures you can take to avoid this, and I'll get to those later on. First off, I want to take things right back to the beginning. Before even thinking about hitting the track, you'll need to devise your pit strategy. ACC allows you to create up to 30 different pit strategies where you can set tyre pressures, wet and dry tyre compounds, fuel levels and brake pad compounds. This is rather handy as it allows you to cover all bases in terms of strategy. If you want to take an in-depth look at setting pit stop presets, make sure you check out part 2 of our ACC setup guide. Having these presets ready to go means you can be prepared for all sorts of different scenarios. If it suddenly starts raining before your pit stop for example, you can quickly select the wet pit strategy preset you'd created earlier by navigating the game's multifunction display, also shortened to MFD. Maybe you want no tyre or driver change and just a splash of fuel. Make a preset for it. In races with mandatory pit stops, there will be a guide you'll need to follow in order to make this stop valid, and this will change depending on the rules for each specific race or series. In most cases, you'll have to change tyres and swap drivers at the very least, although online servers often use different pit parameters to provide a bit of variety. These might include specific pit windows, maximum stint timers for each driver, or a minimum number of required stops. Let's look at some examples. Here, you can see we have to make one mandatory pit stop with specific requirements, these being pit window, driver swap and tyre change. Pit window and driver swap are highlighted in red, meaning I'm not in the correct pit window yet and I haven't selected the other driver for the required driver swap. If any of these are red, it means your pit stop will be invalid, and therefore you will have to come in again at some stage. In the second example, you can now see I'm within the correct pit stop window, and I have the other driver selected. Everything is green, signalling that my pit stop setup is valid and therefore will count as my one mandatory stop. With the ability to change pit stop settings through the MFD, you can actually rectify any issues that make your stop invalid on the fly, but just make sure you do this a couple of laps before your stop, you don't want to be rushing or panicking just before you come in. So, now that your pit stop menu is set, and those settings meet the requirements for a valid pit stop, it's time to think about the approach. The entry itself is down to practice, you need to know how tight the corners are and crucially where the pit lane entry line is. You'll need to engage your pit lane speed limiter just before the entry line. Just make sure that you're down to first gear before you engage the limiter. Staying in second will prevent the limiter from working in most cars, and this mistake can be very costly. A speeding penalty in the pit lane? Well, that's a 30 second stop go penalty, which means you have to drive into the pits, stop for 30 seconds, and then drive out to the pits. It costs you around about a minute. It's not, not nice. Bad memories. So, with first gear and the limiter on, trundle along pit road until you approach your pit box. This is normally marked with a red outline, although this can be turned off in the options menu if you want that extra bit of immersion. Your aim is to stop inside the red box so that your car can be lifted up onto the jacks and then the refueling and driver swaps can take place. It takes practice to judge where the best place to stop is and varies from car to car. As you can see in this example, I'm aiming for the second from top yellow chevron on the pit board to be just visible above the dash. Generally, these chevrons on the pit board are the best marker to use if you want to judge your distances accurately. If you want to be as accurate as possible, you can even try changing to the bonnet camera as you drive down pit lane. The board is held by an extremely trusting mechanic that clearly hasn't seen me drive before, but that's by the by. Again, it's all about practicing your approach and make sure you're slow and gentle into the pit box. Trust me, you lose way more time if you get your positioning slightly wrong than you do for being smooth and steady into the pit box. Normally, if the mechanics have to push you into position, it will cost you around 5 extra seconds. The moment you stop is also the moment where your driving assists become important and they actually affect the procedure. The quickest way to make a pit stop on ACC is to have your engine start set to manual rather than automatic. To initiate the pit stop itself, you must switch off the engine once your car is stopped. I generally hit the ignition key on my keyboard to do this, and if you want to map this button to your wheel, just be aware that you might end up accidentally pressing it mid-power slide. When your mechanics have finished their work, you'll have to manually restart your car. Remember to switch the ignition on first. 
One or two seconds before you regain control of the car, hold down the starter button. And when I say hold down, I mean hold down, not press. At this stage, plant your foot on the gas to enable a quick getaway when the car is dropped. Luckily, the pit lane speed limiter remains engaged, so you don't need to press it and there's no chance of speeding. For the adventurous among you, it's possible to use a manual clutch, so when you roll into your pit box, you can intentionally stall the car to initiate the pit stop. Leaving the box using the manual clutch can be marginally quicker too, but for most, it's not worth the risk of stalling. I actually once lost me and my teammate the biggest race win of our sim racing careers at the time by stalling on the exit of my pit box from the lead. As you might have thought, I'd therefore recommend having your engine start set to manual, but your clutch set to automatic. However, if you would like to play it safe and use automatic for everything, that's fine too. Doing it this way means you don't have to press any buttons when you stop or start the engine. However, it's painfully slow and will delay you a few seconds. Once you reach the pit lane exit line, hit the limiter button to turn it off, check your mirrors and away you go. And that's your lot. Oh, wait wait a minute. I'm in an online race, I went to check my virtual mirrors and, well, I, I didn't have any. Uh... Why is that? Yes! Why is that so close competition on it? Why? Ever since I can remember, there's been a glitch with ACC when you're doing an online race. Straight after your pit stop, the virtual mirror can sometimes disappear. Maybe they wanted to simulate you having to adjust your mirrors, I don't know. The only way I know how to get them back is to cycle through all of the driving cameras, and this can be pretty distracting. However, I have devised a method that makes things slightly easier. Whilst you're sitting in your pit box, use this time to select the driving camera that's one click before your preferred driving camera. Doing this saves you having to cycle through all of the different angles quickly when you get back onto the circuit. You just need to click once and your mirrors are back with your original driving view. It's a bit of a rudimentary fix, but it works for me. There is one more element I want to cover before summarising. Some online races on ACC involve actual driver swaps rather than just a name swap that you would see offline. The way this works is almost identical. You select the driver you want in the car and then make a pit stop as normal. The second driver will gain control when the pit stop ends and the car is dropped from the jacks. One thing to bear in mind is that the driver coming into the pits has a countdown timer for the pit stop, whilst the driver getting into the car doesn't. So, if you're communicating through a voice channel, make sure whoever's getting out of the car counts down the driver who's getting into the car so they know when they're ready to go. The first driver can start the car in advance for the second driver in the same way, hitting the starter motor a couple of seconds before the end of the countdown. The second driver just needs to rest their foot on the accelerator in advance, so as soon as the stop is complete, they accelerate away. To summarise then, just as in real life GT racing, pit stops on ACC are crucial. They can be the difference between winning and losing, and if you get it very wrong, i.e. breaking the pit lane speed limit or overshooting your pit box, you can potentially lose a lot of positions. Conversely, making a perfect pit stop can gain you lots of time, and making sure you're familiar with all of ACC's pit stop game mechanics is key to this. Here's a quick recap for you. Prepare well with pit stop presets, and make sure you're confident in navigating the MFD in order to set up your pit stops correctly, a lap or two in advance. Practice your entry, focus on the pitboard chevrons and be smooth and steady into the box. This is the easiest bit to get wrong and costs the most time, so is therefore the most important part. Cycle through your cameras, get your engine started a couple of seconds before the pit stop ends and floor it out of the box. One more click of the camera button to fix your mirrors if you're racing online, turn your limiter off as you cross the exit line and away you go. So there we have it, the perfect pit stop. And if this video has helped you knock down your pit stop times, make sure you let us know in the comments below. Whilst you're here on Traction, go and check out some of our other ACC videos for more help and advice. And until next time, keep it pinned, thanks for watching, and give your lollipop person a raise.